to the game in just a moment, but right now, here is the announcement I know you've been waiting for, the price announcement that will change the lipstick habits of every woman in America. From this day forward, you'll never have to buy lipstick the old-fashioned way again. Now, for the price, forgive my stepping out, I was just trying to comfort Giovanna, but believe me, I'd like to tell you about this. For the price of ordinary lipstick, Revlon gives you not only the lipstick, but they give it to you in this glamorous new Futurama, both for only $1.25, the same price you'd pay for any leading brand of just lipstick. Imagine, only $1.25 for a jewelry design lipstick case you can't afford not to own because it costs less and less every time you use it. And what a difference from the old-fashioned way. When your lipstick in this ordinary case is used up, out it goes. But with your glamorous Futurama, you pay $1.25 one time and one time only. Last week, our visiting champion from Italy, Giovanna Ferrara, whose category is American history, answered the $1,000 question. Tonight, she's back to tell us whether she'll take her $1,000 or leave it and try for $2,000 on her march to the $64,000 question. And our brush salesman from the Bronx, Wilton J. Springer, whose category is drama, answered his $2,000 question. Tonight, he's back to tell us if he'll take his two or leave it and try for $4,000 on his march to the $64,000 question. Revlon, the greatest name in cosmetics, presents the 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Yes, the $64,000 question. If it's the finest of its kind in cosmetics, it's by Revlon. And tonight, Revlon brings you a fabulous announcement. The most breathtaking value in the history of cosmetics. And now, the star of our show, where knowledge is king and the reward king size, Pal March! <laughs> Good, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm really looking forward to tonight's show, so if you don't mind, let's get going. Bill, who is Revlon's first guest? Well, Hal, back for the second week on her climb to the $64,000 question is our champion from Romeo, Italy, whose category is American history, Giovanna Ferrara. Right. Giovanna, buongiorno. How do you feel? Oh, good afternoon. Good. good. Fine. How, how are you gentlemen this evening? Very fine. Well, thank good. You. Giovanna's entourage seems to have gotten larger. Are you both are you both going to uh, interpret or translate? No, I'm stepping out and Mr. Adolfo Comba is taking over. Mr. Comba is on the staff of the cultural division of the Italian Embassy. Oh, I see. Well, Mr. Weston, it was very nice to have met you last week. Uh, and. Uh, I wish the stage were a little larger. You could stick around for the entire proceedings. However, thank, thank you for you. being with us and thank you for serving last week. Thank and you. I hope uh, your charge does very well in the show. Okay? In Boca Lupo. Good night, Mr. Weston. Good night. Now, uh, I'd like to ask you this, Giovanna, or actually, Mr. Coma, how does this show compare to the Italian counterpart where Giovanna won five million lira? Vorrei eh, fare questa domanda, Giovanni, eh, Giovanna. Um, potrebbe fare un paragone fra il programma di stasera e il programma italiano sul quale ha vinto 5 milioni? Beh, um, ci sono cose diverse, però um, tutti e due i programmi sono molto thrilling. Oh, she says there are different things, of course, in uh, those programmi, but both of them are very thrilling. Really? Well, well what's, what's different? Uh, quali sono le differenze esattamente? Beh, per esempio qui c'è molta più calma, mentre in Italia durante il programma ci sono come minimo sei o sette uh, stenografi che prendono tutte le parole che dice il concorrente. Well, she says one of the differences, for instance, is uh, that here everything is quite calm, whereas in Italy, uh, practically during the broadcast, you have at least six or seven stenographers who, who take down every word. We actually have the same thing here, only we call them sponsors. They're right out there, they've got the whole place. <laughs> what else is different about, is there anything else different about the two programs? C'è qualche cos'altro di diverso fra i due programmi? Beh, adesso cerco di dirlo in inglese. She says she will try to say that in English herself. Right. Ah, certo. 
you give many more money here, yeah. but uh, the tension is uh, the same in both programs. And uh, in both programs, my uh, stomach, my stomach, go uh, flip and flap. <laughs> Well, if it's any comfort to you, and you can translate this to your final later, my stomach also goes a fling, flush, sometimes. <laughs> Same thing. How about the, uh, the master ceremonies on the Italian show? How do we compare? Dice, potrebbe fare anche un paragone fra i due presentatori dei due programmi? Beh, um, sono persone diverse. Mai buongiorno, che in inglese si potrebbe dire o tradurre come Mike e lo, è molto diverso da lei. Sì, in realtà, perché sono due persone diverse. Mike buongiorno, che uh, you might translate as Mike hello, è molto diverso da lei. That's the name of the AMC, That's Mike. That's what she says, Mike hello. Un well, unusual name, Mike. Very unusual name. How is he different from me? E in che cosa è diverso da lui? She was trying to say that in English herself. All right. Both are very pleasing. Oh. And but uh, my buongiorno is um, like uh, an uh, American, and uh, you is like uh, a Latin. Grazie, sì. <laughs> what do you, uh, Giovanna? What do you do in the Robbia? Cosa fa quando sta a Robbio? Insomma, studia, lavora? Beh, io sono una studentessa in chimica e frequento l'Università a Pavia. I am a student of chemistry and uh, I attend the University of Pavia. Oh, I see. Do you have any boyfriends? Dice, ha il boyfriend in Italia. Oh, beh, questa domanda è un po' insidiosa perché io non so cosa rispondere perché... Questo è un po' non ci rende conto di chiamare. Perché boyfriend? Any? Uh, she said no. The way you were talking, I see you like to change that status, but I don't blame you. Well, we're going <laughs> we're gonna to get to the game in just a moment, but right now, here is the announcement I know you've been waiting for, the price announcement that will change the lipstick habits of every woman in America. From this day forward, you'll never have to buy lipstick the old-fashioned way again. Now... For the price, forgive my stepping out, I was just trying to comfort Giovanna, but believe me, I'd like to tell you about this. For the price of ordinary lipstick, Revlon gives you not only the lipstick, but they give it to you in this glamorous new Futurama, both for only $1.25, the same price you'd pay for any leading brand of just lipstick. Imagine, only $1.25 for a jewelry design lipstick case you can't afford not to own because it costs less and less every time you use it. And what a difference from the old-fashioned way. When your lipstick in this ordinary case is used up, out it goes. But with your glamorous Futurama, you pay $1.25 one time and one time only. Futurama is a permanent case not a throwaway. When you need a new lipstick, you pay just 90 cents for a full-sized Revlon refill and 90 cents from $1.25 saves you 35 cents each and every time. And changing refills is so easy. Look, click out, click in. That's all. Can you imagine a more magnificent way to save money? Start buying lipstick the new, modern way tomorrow. Look for this display. Futurama plus lipstick for only $1.25. Yes, get your fabulously beautiful Futurama only $1.25, complete with any of Revlon's three lipstick types. Revlon Living, Lustrous, or Lanolite. Thank you. <laughs> Last week, Giovanna answered correctly the $1,000 question, and the next question's worth $2,000, so if you're both ready, would you follow me to where Mr. Ben Fight is of the Manufacturer Trust Company? We'll get a hold of the next question. All right. Stand right next to Giovanna. Fine. Ready? Sí. may have a $2,000 question. Thank you. Here it is. The 28th state to join the Union was a fully independent sovereignty before it became a state. If you'd like, incidentally, to translate that part of the question at a time, you're feel free. Would you like to translate that? All right. Il ventottesimo stato che si è unito all'Unione 
mm. vero? Eh, era prima di unirsi completamente indipendente e sovrano. Sì. Momento, right. non è finito ancora. Uh, for $2,000 first name this state, then tell the year that it entered the union. Per 2000 dollari, Giovanni. Primo il nome dello Stato e numero due quando, in che anno si è riunito al resto del, della Confederazione. Lo Stato era il Texas. Lo Stato era il Texas. E l'anno 1845. 1845. You're right for $2,000. The question's worth $4,000. La prossima domanda vale $4,000. dollari. Sì? Avanti. May I have that? Thank you. Here it is for $4,000. The Battle of Yorktown marked the end of the Revolutionary War. For $4,000, name four other significant land battles of the American Revolution. La battaglia di Yorktown ha segnato la fine della guerra revoluzionaria. Per 4.000 dollari, eh, nomini, ci dica quali sono altre quattro battaglie significative, battaglie di terra della guerra revoluzionaria. Sì. La battaglia di Long Island. Sì. La battaglia di Saratoga. La battaglia di Trento, di Princeton, di... Camden, the Campens, the Mammut Court. See, 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 four thousand dollars. You're right for four thousand dollars. Giovanna has answered correctly the four thousand dollars and thereby reaching Revlon's second plateau. That means that from now on, if she goes ahead for any other questions and misses her Parisa Cancellation is uh, nineteen fifty six. 1956 Cadillac Convertible. Sto spiegando che è passata al secondo stadio adesso, anche oh, se perde, yes. All right. porta via una Cadillac a 56. Cadillac a 56. Now, all right, so if you're ready, so my Lynn, would you escort the lovely people, escort Giovanna into the booth, Miss Combo, you stand outside with me. <laughs> Giovanna, can you hear me? Yes. See me? Yes. Can you hear? 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 I want Giovanna to name the 13 original United States. Vuole sapere per 8000 per 8000 dollari il nome del tredicesimo stato originale degli Stati Uniti. All right. Oh, take 30, 30 seconds. secondi. Good luck. Buona fortuna. Up, Giovanna? Yes. Please. Name. Uh, il, vuole sapere uh, il nome delle tredici colonie no, o il nome del tredicesimo? Uh, you want to know uh, the, the name of the 13th state? All, thir all, thir thir all 13. All 13. All 13. Tutti e tredici, il nome di tutti e oh. tredici gli stati. Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, uh, Pennsylvania, Delaware, huh? Huh? Maryland, Delaware. Delaware, Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Virginia, uh, no, Virginia, uh, Georgia, Carolina del Nord e Carolina del Sud. Carolina del Nord, Carolina del Sud. <laughs> Giovanna, you're right for $8,000. I 
I hope she stays around for a few weeks. I'm beginning to love and learn the language. Ci cioè, spero che esca bene dopo qualche settimana. Comincio a imparare a amare la lingua italiana. Thank Giovanna, congratulations. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you very much for being with us. Now, Giovanna's next question is worth sixteen thousand dollars. We'd like her to think over her decision for a week. Come back next week and tell us whether she will take the eight thousand that she won tonight or leave it and try for sixteen. Prossima right. domanda dice per la sedici mila dollari, quindi bisogna che ci pensi un po' se vuole lasciare. Thank you. Good night, Giovanna. Good night. Good night. Our next contestant is an American. It's going to confuse me. Bill, who is our next contestant? Well, Hal, back for the second week on his climb to the $64,000 question is our brush salesman from the Bronx, whose category is drama, Wilton J. Springer. Welcome back to the show. Well, you've been off for a couple of weeks, huh? Yeah, well, I had a chance to study a little bit. Sure. How's the brush business? Very good. Very good. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, I've always wanted, I've been... Uh, I brought you something, Hal. Oh, you did? What's well, just sample. What is this? A vegetable brush. Only this afternoon, Candy was saying, Hal, you're not brushing your vegetables. You see how nicely this works? <laughs> Thank you very much, Wilton. I, I'd, uh, I, I've been wanting to ask you this. Uh, in your selling brushes from door to door, are your customers mostly men or women? Mostly women. It must be kind of interesting work. Well, that's a very interesting. I usually see them in sort of an unglamorous situation, you know, yeah. bathrobes and so forth. Yeah. Well, why don't you come back later in the day when they're dressed more appealingly? Some women are like that all day long, Hal. Huh? We'll get to you in just a moment, Wilton. But right now, if you'll excuse me, tell me, girls, don't you think the new Futurama is the most exciting cosmetic value you've ever known? And how? I do. Me too. I'm so excited about it, I can't get over it, Hal. You know how a woman is about saving money. Well, I feel like I'm the smartest girl in the world. You will, too. This beautiful Futurama designed by Van Cleef and Arpels, complete with lipstick, is only $1.25. Just look at the difference. When you use Futurama, well, you're glamorous. And the other? Well, I'm afraid it's just another lipstick. Yet the price is exactly the same, $1.25. And your Futurama saves you money day after day. Futurama is a permanent case. When you want a new lipstick, just get a Revlon click-in refill. It's full lipstick size, and it's only 90 cents, which means you save 35 cents on every lipstick. And you choose your Futurama complete with Revlon's three lipstick types. Lanolite, the creamy non-smear type with the vivid color that goes on to stay, won't fade away and won't dry your lips. Revlon Living, the 24-hour type, and Revlon Lustrous, the extra creamy lipstick for sensitive lips to give your lips the moist, inviting, dewy look. Yes, girls, it's the modern way, the money-saving way, really the only way to buy lipstick, Futurama, Complete with your choice of any Revlon lipstick, only $1.25. Thank you. Well, Wilton, a couple of weeks ago when we ran out of time, you answered correctly the $2,000 question. Your question tonight is worth $4,000, and your category is drama, if I remember correctly. That's right. Do you like going? Sure enough. Well, if you'll follow me to where Mr. Ben Fight is, we'll get that question get going. Here we All go. Right. Here it is, Wilton, your $4,000 question. Come Back, Little Sheba was a hit of the 1950 New York theater season and was later made into a fine motion picture. For $4,000, tell me first who wrote the play, then who was its female star, and finally who played the male lead on stage. All right, the author was William Inge, mm -hmm. and Shirley Booth was the female star. Right. And Sidney Blackman was the male lead. You're right for $4,000. Will, you know, of course, that you've passed Revlon's second plateau. That means that if you go ahead and miss any of the questions, your consolation prize will be a brand new 1956 Cadillac convertible. Nice to drive up to the front of the theater with, huh? You're very nice. Might as well go ahead because it's almost a free question. Ready for the $8,000 question? Then would you escort Mr. Right. Springer into the booth, please? Hear me okay? Fine. See me? Yeah. Can Ready you hear me? Fight? Yes, I can hear you fine. All I right. hope I hear you right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fight. 
All right, I'll ask the question once. I won't repeat it. You'll then have 30 seconds to think over your answer. Here it is for $8,000. I will show you four photographs taken from the files of Theater Arts Magazine. They are a part of a collection that pictures outstanding scenes from great Broadway productions over a 41-year period. May I have them, please? Thank you. Here you are. Now, Walton, we'll examine, examine picture number one very carefully, please. Now, picture number two. Now, picture number three. Finally, number four. Okay? For $8,000, this is the question. I want you to name the four plays shown in these pictures. You have 30 seconds. Good luck. Up, let's go to picture number one. What play is that? My sister Eileen. That's correct. Now picture number two. Questa. That is correct. Picture number three. Du Barry was a lady. Right. Just one more now for eight thousand dollars. Picture number four. Counselor at law. You're right for eight thousand dollars. <laughs> Plays. Now, of course, you know that your next question is worth $16,000. This time, I'm sure you'll just have a week to think it over, and we want you to come back at the end of that time tell us whether you'll take the eight or leave it in trap 16, okay? Thank you for being Thank with you. us tonight. Congratulations, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bill, who is Revlon's next guest? Well, Hal, our next guest on the golden threshold of the $64,000 question is from Suffolk, England, Mr. Randolph Churchill. have a lot of friends before we even start. Welcome to the show, Mr. Churchill. Thank you very much. What do you do for a living, if I might ask? Well, I'm a journalist and an author. I see. At the moment, uh, I'm trying to finish the life of the late Lord Derby, mm -hmm. who was a famous English uh, statesman and racing man whose ancestor founded the English Derby and after whom your Kentucky Derby is named. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, your, your father, Mr. Churchill, what does he do? Well, he's retired now. But, what did he do before he was retired? Well, he started life as a soldier, and then he went into politics and did a bit of painting and wrote a bit. I said, well, how did he do in politics? In politics? Well, he had his ups and downs, but uh, <laughs> most people thought he did rather well in the end. Uh, there was a recent unpleasantness in Europe for that fellow called Hitler. You know, I he had something to do with getting rid of him. And uh, Thank goodness for that. Yes. I... Uh, Churchill, I think I've heard of your illustrious father and I'm an admirer of his, the same as millions and millions of other free-thinking people. Now, about war service, I understand you saw quite a bit yourself. Well, I was in the army all through the war, yes. Would you like to tell us a little about it? Well, I went out to uh, Egypt in 1941 with the commandos, and then I was in the uh, uh, landing in North Africa, French North Africa, had the honor to serve under General Eisenhower, and... Uh, the last, I was in the Mediterranean nearly all the war, and the um, last year of the war, I spent in uh, Yugoslavia as an officer with the British military mission attached to um, Marshal Tito and the Partisans. Weren't you uh, wounded during one of those campaigns? No, I was never wounded in the war. I did get a bit of a wound in the leg, but oh. that was uh, in 1950 when I was just a war correspondent uh, in uh, Korea, and I was, went on a night patrol with an American unit across the Nat Chong River. Uh, it must seem awfully tame here after having seen all of this. Well, action. I don't know. There seems to be a lot of batteries around here. <laughs> it's a different character. <laughs> Mr. Churchill, we've uh, never had the son of a prime minister in our show before, and, and I'd like, when you go back to England, for you to do a favor for me, if you would. Well, what is it? Would you say hello to Pop? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I sure will. Now, uh, I think it might be a good idea if we choose a category, Mr. Churchill, so that we can play our game, all right? Yes, sir. If you'll turn right around, there's Revlon's list of categories. 
Yes, and so. choose one. You well, I mustn't be too choosy, must I? I, I think I'll uh, go for number six. The English language? Yes. What an ironic choice that is. <laughs> if Lynn Dollar will press number six in the IBM machine, we'll have our list of questions. I'm Lynn, not please. an expert in English. Uh, I'm afraid not. I think it's against the fire ordinance to smoke, Mr. Uh, Churchill. At any rate, you know the do you know the rules of our game? Questions start with $64. Keep doubling uh, until we get to 512. If you miss anywhere along the line, you go, like that, yeah. go home with a, an envelope loaded with vacuum, with nothing. Yeah. But you can go on from there. All right, if you are ready, so am I. Many, Might I to look? No. Not at no, all. No. Many personal names have passed into our language. For example, the Gatling gun is named for Dr. R.J. Gatling, its inventor. I will describe a number of incidents or persons. You tell me what word in our language derives from each of them. For $64, a certain English nobleman was so absorbed in gambling that he would not leave the tables in order to eat. What word comes from this? Sandwich. You're right for $64. The next question is worth $128. Do you feel like going to have a Yes, sir. Very well. For $128, the land agent of the Earl of Erne in County Mayo in 1880 was so tyrannical that the people banded together and refused to have any social or commercial dealings with him. What word comes from this? You couldn't make better. Um... He was a, a, a land agent. Yes, I was Lord Ern. I didn't know it. Um, and there's a word like Sandra Coventry, but it um, seems to be escaping me. Um, well, uh, can you give me a clue? Um, well, it's uh, it's uh, the only clue I can give you is that it's it's something that people do to other people, or, or nations do to other nations. Uh, it's I, I I might even be yeah. misleading you. It's a uh, it is also a verb. It's something that takes place yes. on a nation, possibly. Yes. Uh, they... I'm very sorry to interrupt. We didn't have enough time for this sequence. <laughs> Mr. Churchill, I'm certain... How humiliating. <laughs> to me, uh, Mr. Churchill, I'm sure the question won't be used next week, so I can tell you it'd be only to alleviate the curiosity. It's boycott. Well, of course. <laughs> it's very bad. <laughs> Had a complete blackout on it for the moment. Well, that won't happen again. I'm glad you got it over just A before. blackout on the boycott. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Churchill, that's the hazard of this show. However, we would like very much for you to come back next week and continue where you left off. Would that be all right? Well, that's very kind of you. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank I'll you very much for being here. <laughs> now here's Evelyn Patrick with her first-hand information on how to get the best care for your hands. So many brands of hand lotion. Which one for you? The one that protects and heals as no cosmetic lotion can. Medicated Silicare by Revlon. When you use medicated Silicare, no soap, no detergent, almost nothing that can irritate your skin can possibly come in direct contact with your hands. And if your hands are rough, red, and hurt, Medicated Silicare gives healing medication that gets deep down to cracks and cuts. I give my hands the kind of care that no cosmetic lotion can give with Medicated Silicare. Before we close, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to remind you to tune into the $64,000 challenge this week when Edward G. Robinson challenges Vincent Price on great art. By the way, you can catch Edward G. Robinson earlier in a dramatic scene on the Ed Sullivan Show. Until next week, then, when Revlon again presents the $64,000 question. Good night, everybody. Good night. If you'd like to be a contestant, just send us a letter addressed to the $64,000 question, CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York. Tell us about yourself and enclose a snapshot which cannot be returned. Be sure to be with us next week when Revlon will again bring you the $64,000 question. Transportation for contestants brought back to second week is arranged by American Airlines. American Airlines will fly contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. Silver Rich for Martini, your announcer, Bill Rogers.